flump. With a funny, muffled sort of thump, he landed on something soft. He sat up and felt around, his eyes not used to the gloom. It felt as though he was sitting on some sort of plant. It's okay, he called up to the light of the size of the closest stamp, which was the open trap door. It's a soft landing. You can jump. Ron followed straight away. He landed sprawled next to Harry. What's this stuff? were his first words. Dunno, some sort of plant thing. I suppose it's here to break the fall. Come on, Hermione. The distant music stopped. There was a loud bark from the dog. But Hermione had already jumped. She landed on Harry's other side. Must We must be miles under the school, she said. Lucky this plant thing's here, really, said Ron. Lucky, shrieked Hermione. Look at you both. She leapt up and struggled towards a damp wall. She had to struggle because the moment she landed, the plant had started to twist snake-like tendrils around her ankles. As for Harry and Ron, their legs had already been bound tightly in long creepers without their noticing. Hermione had managed to free herself before the plant got a firm grip on her. Now she watched in horror as the two boys fought to pull the plant off them. But the more they strained against it, the tighter and faster the plant wound around them. Stop moving, Hermione ordered them. I know what this is. It's double snare. Oh, I'm so glad we know what it's called. That's a great help, snarled Ron, leaning back, trying to stop the plant curling around his neck. Shut up. I'm trying to remember how to kill it, said Hermione. Well, hurry up. I can't breathe, Harry gasped, rustling with it as it curled around his chest. Devil snare, devil snare. What did Professor Sprout say? It likes the dark and the damp. So light a fire, Henry choked. Yes, of course, but there's no wood, Hermione cried, wringing her hands. Have you gone mad, Ron bellowed. You Are you a witch or not? All right, said Hermione, and she whipped out her wand, waved it, muttered something, and sent a jet of the same bluebell flame she had used on Snape at the plant. In a matter of seconds, the two boys felt its loosening its grip as it cringed away from the light and warmth. Wriggling and flailing, it unraveled itself from their bodies, and they were able to pull free. Lucky you pay attention in herbology, Hermione, said Harry, as he joined her by the wall, wiping sweat off his face. Yeah, said Ron, and lucky Harry doesn't lose his head in a crisis. But there's no wood, honestly. This way, said Harry, pointing down a stone passageway, which was the only way on. All they could hear, apart from their footsteps, was the gentle drip of water trickling down the walls. The passageway sloped downwards, and Harry was reminded of Gringotts. With an unpleasant jolt of the heart, he remembered the dragon said to be guarding vaults in the wizard's bank. If they met a dragon, a fully grown dragon. Norbert had been bad enough. Can you hear something? Ron whispered. Harry listened. A soft rustling and clinking seemed to be coming from up ahead. Do you think it's a ghost? I don't know. Sounds like wings to me. There's light ahead. I can see something moving. They reached the end of the passageway and saw before them a brilliantly lit chamber its ceiling arching high above them. It was full of small, jewel-bright birds, fluttering and tumbling all around the room. On the opposite side of the chamber was a heavy wooden door. Do you think they'll attack us if we cross the room? said Ron. Probably, said Harry. They don't look very vicious, but I suppose if they all swoop down at once, well, there's nothing for it. I'll run. He took a deep breath, covered his face with his arms, and sprinted across the room. He expected to feel sharp beaks and claws tearing at him any second, but nothing happened. He reached the door untouched. He pulled the handle 
but it was locked. The other two followed him. They tugged and heaved at the door, but it wouldn't budge. Not even when Hermione tried her Alohomora charm. Now what, said Ron. These birds, they can't be just here for decoration, said Hermione. They watched the birds soaring overhead, glittering, glittering. They're not birds, Harry said suddenly. They're keys, winged keys. Look carefully. So that must mean, he looked around the chamber while the other two squinted up at the flock of keys. Yes, look, broomsticks. We've got to catch the key to the door. But there are hundreds of them. Ron examined the lock on the door. We're looking for a big old fashioned one, probably silver, like the handle. They seized a broomstick each and kicked off into the air, soaring into the midst of the cloud of keys. They grabbed and snatched, but the bewitched keys darted and dived so quickly, it was almost impossible to catch one. Not for nothing, though, was Harry the youngest seeker in a century. He had a knack for spotting things other people didn't. After a minute's weaving about through the whirl of rainbow feathers, he noticed a large silver key that had a bent wing, as if it had already been caught and stuffed roughly into the keyhole. That one, he called to the others. That big one, there. No, there, with the bright blue wings. The feathers are all crumpled on one side. Ron went speeding in the direction that Harry was pointing, crashed into the ceiling, and nearly fell off his broom. We've got to close in on it, Harry called, not taking his eyes off the key with the diamond damaged wing. Ron, you come at it from above. Hermione, stay below and stop it going down, and I'll try and catch it. Right? Now! Ron dived. Hermione rocketed upwards. The key dodged them both, and Harry streaked after it. It sped towards the wall. Harry leant forward and with a nasty crunching noise, pinned it against the stone with one hand. Ron and Hermione's cheers echoed around the chamber. They landed quickly and Harry ran to the door, the key struggling in his hand. He rammed it into the lock and turned. It worked. The moment the lock had clicked open, the key took flight again, looking very battered now that it had been caught twice. Ready? Harry asked the other two, his hand on the door handle. They nodded. He pulled the door open.